so the question was, have I ever been to Pritchard Hill? Well, yes, I did visit another Pritchard Hill winery Wonderful. a long time ago. Yes. Long time ago, in other words, you visited Chapelain. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I got it. And, and, and we had a, a great friggin' time. Yes. But the point was, uh, at that point in time, Pritchard Hill wasn't Pritchard Hill as we know today. <laughs> it was, but it wasn't. No, you're right. You're right. In fact, I worked on the first wines from uh, Chapelain as a kid because they were harvested at Robert Mondavi Winery. And as I would work there every summer, um, I worked on their wine before they had their own winery, which I think they completed in um, 67. Uh, and, uh, but they have been the, the lone soldiers out there until fairly recently. Um, and then people didn't real, think about it as Pritchard Hill. Right. They thought about it as the Chapelais. They thought about it as other people, or they thought about it as individual wine one-off wine individuals yeah. are thinking historically was always about people. Right, right. Who is it? What are the brands? Who are the people? And then, oh yeah, there was this Colgan and uh, well, that down the way there was uh, Dalla Valle. For me, that was important, <laughs> even though they were Oakville, right? Right. But it's that red, rocky, volcanic soil. But yeah. when I looked up there, I said, wow, this stuff is fabulous. This is uh, our property. We, we now have 173 acres of, of land up there. 62 of them are dedicated to vines. It is this red, rocky, volcanic soil that just makes my toes curl, right? It is, uh, <laughs> it's fabulous. Uh, westerly exposure, southerly exposure, yeah. love it. Vines uh, that contribute to this were planted in 91 and 96, so the average age of the vines here about uh, uh, 20 years old, a little mm -hmm. bit more than that. They're fermented in uh, oak fermenters and cement, no stainless steel, so 75% oak fermenters, 25% uh, cement fermenters, long maceration, um, and this is something I've kind of come to over a, a few years. This last year was my 41st harvest full-time. Um, I have to add seven if I add my, one of my vintages with uh, making, <laughs> working on the Chapelet ones. Right, right, right. Uh, in high school. But, um, <clears throat> um, yeah, but we, we are in love with this property. It is, uh, continuous state is fabulous. Well, well, let's talk about the insider trading aspect of this. Because going back to Chapelet, you knew Right? I mean, like, when did you know Pritchard Hill? Was this something that it you, had, you had? No, Pritchard Hill I mean, oh. was not part of, you know, I, I think that for me, I knew that area based on Naoko Dalavale's wine. Yeah. I knew that area based on lots of others, other vineyards. And I, you know, I've kicked a lot of dirt in my day. And, yeah. Uh, um, and, but early on, the Chapelets were known for Chenin Blanc. Right. Uh, very yeah. early on. Yeah. yeah uh, when yeah. you may have visited them last. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there are another uh, others that have kind of caught a little bit of limelight. But to me, it, truly, it was the soil. It was yeah. the soil, and it was the exposure. Right. It wasn't who else was there. It was what does that soil give in that wine? Right. That's what I was looking for. I didn't right. need. I felt you know my family's been around a long time. You might have heard of us. Like M and Davi. Yeah, so okay, yeah. that's it. I think you got it. But, <laughs> at any rate, so, you know, I felt that we could create something if it was real. Right. If it was real and if it was in the bottle, if it was in the glass, we could do anything we wanted to. Right. But we had to stick to it. We had to stick to it. We had to right. stick to it. And we're doing that. And it's happening. And But you have to have the right ground. And it is the right ground. Right. So I couldn't be happier. Now, now, are these? Is 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 it the exposure aspect of Pritchard that's unique? Is it the soil? Is it all of it together? It's all is of it. Is there anybody else with these kind of red rocky soils? Oh yeah. Else, no, I think most them? everybody on Pritchard Hill has a similar red rocky soil. On Pritchard Hill. On Pritchard Hill. Now there are. If you look up and down the valley, uh, that that volcanic flow goes down to Rudd. It goes down to Screaming Eagle. Mm -hmm. um, there is that part of the valley. Dalla Valle is a, up higher on the hill. Right, yeah. So you have to take a look at not only the surface, what's on the surface of the soil, but then what's below it. Because some of it can go down and then you can go right through that into alluvial fan soils that go down forever. Right. So the, in Burgundy, I'm sure you've heard uh, and may have written books on this, I don't know. But uh, in Burgundy, they say, don't plant your vines on the top of the hill. Yep. Not enough soil. Right. But likewise, don't plant your, your vines on the valley floor, because yep. in Burgundy, where it rains all the time, yep. you'll have too much soil, too much moisture, and the vines are too big. They're growing, growing, growing. Yeah. Green, green, green. Oh, by the way, yeah. the, the berries are big. The vines are big. Berries are big. And they have greener flavors. 
But for great wine in Burgundy, you go to the side of the hill for the Premier Cru yeah. yep. and the uh, Grand Cru. It's always on the side of the hill. So we're on the side of the hill. Um, Tokolon, I know a little bit about that. Uh, <laughs> Not a bad vineyard. It's probably the best known vineyard in America. Right. My family had 530 acres of it. Uh, Andy Beckstopper has 80. Uh, but it is, so we manage that vineyard. Yeah. 35 to 45 foot deep soils, mm -hmm. bale clay loam, gravel strata, marine derived soils. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. My father knew what he was doing when he went there in the 40s for Charles yeah. Krug. He knew what, what he was doing when, he, when we got them in uh, 79. And uh, so we had 530 acres of the stuff. It was pretty yeah. fabulous. But it was fabulous, especially in 1966, when my father chose to go there after right. 30 years of working with his father yeah. and being at a time when you needed a, a balance between yield, yeah. productivity of the vineyard, and great character. Right. So uh, at the time, and, and the reason he needed that is that the industry was not as mature as it is today. Right. We are we are living like kings today. We really are. We're drinking yeah. better wines than yep. the kings had. We have better fruits and vegetables, better meals than the kings had. Right. But the industry, the wine industry, was had a very narrow band. When my father's vintage, uh, the '66 vintage, was in the marketplace, it was a dollar fifty. Uh, I'm sorry, the least expensive wine in, available in America was about a dollar fifty a bottle. Yeah. Robert Mondotti Cabernet was expensive, right? He'd been around for 30 years, knew what he was doing. 66 Cabernet, four bucks a bottle. But those French, those French, yeah. uh, they could always get more, so much more. Chateau yeah. Lafitte, it was like six bucks six a bucks bottle. bottle. Can you believe it? So, yeah. fourfold difference between the least expensive and the right. most expensive. So, productivity of the vineyards was essential. Yeah, yeah. Hillsides were kind of forget it. Yeah. But now, you know, the least expensive wine is roughly the same. Yeah. Uh, the most, you know, Chateau Lafitte is a little bit more than six bucks a bottle. A touch. I think I saw some, one of its neighbors in there for about 1100 bucks. Yeah, uh, give or take. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so it, it says is we can embrace the hillsides. Yeah. That the, that the Burgundians have talked about all this time where you have a balance of the right amount of soil, the right exposure, and that's ultimately what gives the physiology of the vine to mature the fruit to so it's not just growing 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 and big big vines big right. yields but it's sm smaller vines smaller berries and a physiology that matures the fruit okay so that's the that's the key to hillside uh, vineyards i think and i'm gonna go basic here <laughs> you know it doesn't say cabernet on it no it doesn't it is it gives us the flexibility to have the blend that we're looking for and what we have you know, my, my father always had a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, and Merlot. As the winemaker at Robert Mondavi, we carried on with that for many years with Opus. We also had uh, a blend that was dominantly, what I would say, Medocian. Mm -hmm. uh, a blend of the Medoc favoring high percentage of Cabernet Sauvignon, small amount of Cabernet Franc, and a smaller amount of Merlot. Mm -hmm. um, but over time, your palettes evolve over time. You see, I had an opportunity of designing what I wanted. And so this wine is a high percentage of Cabernet Franc because I love Cabernet Franc. This, my daughter's painting mm -hmm. is a shadow painting of a Cabernet Franc vine that yep. I planted in Tokelon about 35 years ago. But Cabernet Franc has a silkiness. Uh, there's about, um, what is it? Uh, here, I've got the cheat sheet right here. 11% Cabernet Franc. 6% Merlot, 5% Petit Verdot, 78% Cabernet Sauvignon. But I love the complexity that different yeah. varieties give and the opportunity for us to uh, take this fabulous property and take all its diversity and get to know it, but mm. then plant it as we think it will best shine. So that's that's fun. Well, kind of, I, I, to me, the wine kind of captures the the, 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 the elegance of, of the classic Mondavi wines of the past, because you guys were never out to, to bust chops with the wines. There was always a motive, as you said, there was always a modicum of elegance in the wines. Mm -hmm. and, but it still embraces the power of the hillside vineyards of Pritchard Hill. I mean, absolutely. I think it's kind of like having your cake and eating it too. Well, uh, we, you know, for us, wine is all about enhancing a meal. Right. And I'm not a big fan of wines that bite back. Mm -hmm. You know, wine should be balanced <laughs> in every, I like, it's a one way bite as far as I'm concerned. But no, seriously, I think we raise our wine. 
excuse me, with the intention of enveloping them. So the wines are, the barrel aging is far more Burgundian. Our fermentation is mm -hmm. Bordelaise in, in parentage, I would say, where we have long maceration, um, say 30 uh, to 35 days average maceration, some are a little less, some are a little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, and then we'll, but what's different is that we will embrace the yeast. So yeah. we'll stir the leaves below the cap, take it into barrel. This has about 75% new French oak, so we've lowered it down mm -hmm. as we have grown into this fabulous concentration of uh, hillside vineyards of this great location. Sage Mountain or Pritchard Hill, or mm -hmm. Sage Mountain is something I've, because Pritchard Hill is our, our very good friends, uh, the Chapelets, have yeah. a trademark on that. Yeah. So we're trying to come up with another, why do we call this area? So I'm saying, well, why not Sage Mountain? Sage Mountain sounds well, good, good, actually. I know that one day, Veronica and I are going to get married on top of a mountain. And there's going to be flutes playing and trombones and flowers and garlands of fresh herbs. And we will dance till the sun rises. And then our children will form a family band. That's a strong name. It I is. Like a, it. I think it is a strong name. So what happens with the, what happens in the vines on Sage Mountain? Right? As we, as we move forward, do, are, do, do you let these vines get like 30, 40 years old? Does that happen if, in this neck of the woods? Is, it, is, is, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Cabernet as a lead variety is a very sensitive soul. Mm. It doesn't have the lifespan of Zinfandel. It doesn't have the lifespan of Rhone varietals that tend to withstand uh, time. Even in Bordeaux, the oldest vines are not nearly as old as the oldest vines in the Rhone area right. or California Zinfandel. So Cabernet is a sensitive soul, but our av average age of vines here is about 21, 22 years right. in this blend. And our hope is to uh, care for them. You know, if there was this great American philosopher who used to smoke a stogie all the time and said, if I knew I was going to live so long, I'd have taken better care of myself. <laughs> so that was George Burns, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Great American philosopher. Well, we had Cabernet Sauvignon vines at Tokelon that were planted in 1945. Mm. And I kept those in the ground and I said, I want every one of us to realize that, you know, we need to care for these babies in the in with the intention of them living a very long time. I'm a big believer that vines, wines, and people have a lot in common. Yep. The good get better with time. Right. And so old vines do make better wine. Let's care for them in that way. So our new plantings, we are cane pruning yeah. because um, the old vines that the former owners on our land planted and what was normal back at that time, cordon trained. Mm. But that's an invitation to big wounds and utypha yeah, and yeah. all kinds of problems. So everything we're doing now is with the intention of having very old vines. Yeah. And so we love the fact that this has the average age of about a little over 20 years old um, in this wine. So anyway, it's uh, one of the many layers of uh, reality that great wine, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, benefits from. Well, Tim, you may already know this, but your wine's pretty damn good. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you think I've got a future? Right. Uh, well, you know, tell you what, if you stick your nose in the game, keep up with things, I think you thank might you. do all right. Good. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I, 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 I will, uh, you know, I will try. You know, you know, Tim, it's a tough business. Is it? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Now, that's what I heard. Oh, okay. Anyway. Oh, good. Okay. So okay. it's a tough business. Well, I've, so. I've got I've, four of my five kids are working with me in Continuum, and uh, so I've got them buffaloed right now. So they think it's easy. Little do they know. <laughs> Cheers, Tim. <laughs> hey, Tim and Dobby in the house. <laughs> no, it's de I'm delighted to be here. My goodness. And congratulations, three weeks and running for what you are doing. Thank you. That no, is no, fabulous. It's, it's very exciting times it for us. It is very exciting. And, uh, and uh, here's, here's to growing with Continuum, moving forward, man. Let's... All right. Well, <laughs> cheers. Sante, cheers. Sante.